First, give an honor to God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, to Pastor uh, Thompson, to our uh, guest uh, speaker for tonight, as well as our, our ministerial staff, trustees, deacons, uh, family members, friends, guests, visitors. Uh, we welcome you, uh, the body of Christ, uh, this evening as we continue in our third night of our revival. I have a quick word here before a song, and that word is uh, best, B-E-S-T. And I want you to think about it. And uh, if you will give God your, your best, your best tonight, if you will give God your best praise, if you will give God your best worship, if you will give God your best honor, if you will give God your best, I, I promise you that God will give you his best uh, tonight. As a matter of fact, I called it uh, uh, best today. It's a new day. It's the eighth day, and it's called best today. It's not a yesterday. It's today that you need to give God your best. And even when tomorrow comes, you still turn around and you give God your best. So if you would join in with us as we do devotion tonight, uh, give it all you got. Don't leave anything in the gas tank. Give, give God your best. And if it's an adjective, it's talking about the most excellent or def, uh, effective or desirable type of quality. If it's an adverb, it's to the, to the highest degree, it's the most. And if it's a noun, that which is most excellent or desirable, God gives you his best. Why don't you give him your best uh, tonight? Join in with us for a, a time of devotion, and then we'll uh, uh, move forward. When I've done the best I can, oh Lord, and I can't do no more, oh Lord, just let the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart, be accepted in thy sight. gave it my best that's all I had that's all he's asking of you tonight just give him your best and God will give you his best tonight good evening our scripture gonna be coming from Luke 17 verses five through seven and it reads and the apostle said to the Lord increase our faith increase our faith so the Lord said if you have faith as a mustard seed you can say to this mulberry tree be pulled up by the roots and planted in the seed and it will obey you and which of you have servant, servants 
plowing or tending sheep will say to him when he has come in from the fields, come at once and sit down to eat. Scripture, Luke 17, verses 5 through 7, God's word for God's people. Okay, it's, we're going we're gonna to do a prayer. So if you can, and if you would, please rest on your feet. Eternal God, Lord. it is again, Lord, we come before you thanking you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. Lord, it is your mercy that brought us thus far. Lord, with you, all things are possible. Without you, Lord, nothing is impossible. Lord, we want to invite you in to this ceremony, this, 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 what we call a holy night. Lord, we ask that you send your Holy Ghost in this place, Lord. Lord, we ask that you dispatch your angels, Lord. Let them roam through this building, Lord, from corner to corner, from side to side, from top to bottom. Lord, this whole week, you've been in our midst. Lord, I'm not the only one that can say, Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. And, Lord, we cannot stand in here. We cannot even sit in here and say, Lord, that you have not blessed us. Lord, you're the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Lord, we, we've read in your word where you've healed the sick. Lord, I know somebody in here can say, you hear me, Lord, and we want to thank you. Lord, we give you glory. We give you honor. This being the last day, Lord, we pray for a miracle. We pray that whatever it is that's been a challenge to somebody, Lord, that this be the day. And Lord, I believe that deep down inside because I've seen your miracles, Lord. I, I, I felt your miracles. So I'm not, I'm not standing up here saying something that I don't know nothing about. And Lord, I know that there's someone in here who can testify and say that you are Lord and your word is true. And Lord, it says in word, take it to the Lord in prayer. And Lord, it says that where one, two, three, four are among you are in their midst. And so, Lord, I'm expecting a miracle today, Lord. Somebody from deep down is going to come before you today. Somebody today is going to be set free. Somebody today is going to feel like, wow, I should have been did this. For Lord, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. This is the day that you have made. And we will continue to rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we, sp we, we, we lift up the speaker of the hour, Lord. Touch his heart. Let him speak your word, Lord. And Lord, for the congregation, Lord, we pray, Lord, that they open their ears. We hear the word that you have for us today because this is the day. Lord, 
Though we know you're able. Though we know you're able. Lord, we know you're able. Lord, you know you're able. Lord, you're able. And if I had to say one thing, that would be, thank you, Lord. Thank you for all that you have done. Thank you for what you're about to do. Touch everybody, Lord, under the sound of my voice. Touch the musicians. Let them sing with joy. Let them, let them, let them open up, Lord. Let them, let them be free. And it comes a time where we have to let go and let God. So why can't that be today? Let go and let God. If you let go and let God, he will guide you in a direction in which you, 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 you. Let go and let God. Lord, it's, it's something that you want me to say. And Lord, I yield to you right now, Lord, and I ask that you speak through me. It's something, Lord, that you want me to say. It's something that you want me to do. And Lord, have your way. Let the Spirit come down have a joyful day rejoice in the Lord and he shall see you through have your way Lord have your way tonight have your way Lord Have your way. Have your way, Lord. What is it, Lord? Have your way today, Lord. Have your way. For this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Open up your heart. And I will enter. Open up your mind. And let me, thus said the Lord, roam through you. Not only will I give you the mercy and the grace. But I will show you what I've been trying to show you all this time. Open up, said the Lord. Open up. Let go and let God. And Lord, we thank you. We love you. We lift you up. And we yield to you right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let go, people. Let go and let God. Let go, and whatever it is that's bothering you, whatever it is that's upsetting you, whatever it is, let go and let God and watch what happens. You got to let it go. You got to let it go. And whoever that may be, let it go. Okay, this is our last night. But uh, before, we, before we sit down, I want you to get, we've been having fun. So uh, today just happened to be Deacon Blandon's birthday. So if you're joining in and helping me sing a happy birthday to Deacon Blandon, let's sing happy birthday, then we're going to sit down and leave you alone. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Deacon. Happy birthday to you. This concludes our devotion. We thank you for participating. You are now in the hands of the pulpit.
Come on, let's give God some praise for our deacons who have led our, our devotion service. If you could stand all over the building as we prepare for our call to worship tonight. And just, just tonight, tonight, I'm believing tonight is miracle night. I believe tonight is miracle night. If you could stand, would you please stand? Look at your neighbor and say, it's miracle night. It's miracle. It's miracle night. It's miracle night. Come on, I want to raise your expectation tonight. Look at the other neighbor and say, it's a miracle tonight. It's miracle night. Miracle night. Come on now. I need the folk that need God to make a way out of no way. Come on. I said I need God to, the folk who need God to make a way out of no way. No way. No way. No way. No way. No way. I need God for the, to the people who need God to make a way out of no way. Look at your neighbor and say, I need him to make a way out of no way. Out of no way. I need, come on, come on. Say it like you mean it. Say, out of no way. I've done all I can do. I've given all I have. I've prayed all I can pray. I've shouted all I can shout. I've cried all. I ain't got no real folk in here. I've cried all. I've cried. I've called everybody that I know. I've given up everything that I have. And I need God to make a way out of no way. Touch my children. Touch my body. Touch my mind. Touch my ministry. Touch my life. Touch my spouse. I can't get no help in here. Touch my mother. Touch my father. Touch some touch brother touch my money touch my mind touch my peace touch my joy touch 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 come on just say touch 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 me oh God Woo! touch me tonight touch me tonight I know that if God touched me, everything going to be all right. Tell your neighbor, say, it's going to be all right tonight. Tonight. Say, we're not waiting until tomorrow. It's going to happen tonight. Oh, you sitting beside the wrong person. You better find you somebody who came for a miracle. You better find you somebody who came for a breakthrough. You better find somebody who said, if I perish, I perish. If I got to get on the floor and crawl, if I got to put through the crowd, I'm going to touch the hem of his God. And I know I'll be made whole. Say it's miracle night. It's miracle night. It's miracle night. Come on, if you don't mind, lift those hands half mass and just talk to them. Say, God, have your way. Have your way. Come on, half mass. Come on, open your mouths. Come on, shut your eyes and open your mouths. Come on, open your mouths. Have your way, God. Come on, sometimes you got to take the first step. You got to take the first step. And even if you don't know what to say, just tell them thank you. I don't know what to say, but I just want to say thank you for all that you've done. Come on, try it. I'm trying to lead you somewhere. I said try it. Try it. Try it. Don't worry about who's looking at you. Deacon Butler said let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Don't let it mess you up tonight. Oh, God, have your way. 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 Have have your way, have your way, have your way. Come on, I'm trying to show you what to do. Don't look at me. Open your mouth. Have your way, have your way, have your way, have your way. Have your way, have your way in me. In me. Start with me, God. Half mass, hands half mass. It's too loud. Half mass. Hands half mass, right where you are. If you don't mind shutting your eyes for about three seconds, let's not look around. Let's not get distracted. Have thine own way, Lord. Sing it with me. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter. Come on, church. Let's do it together. I am the clay. Come on, mold me. Mold me and make me after thine will, after thy will. While I'm waiting, while I am waiting, yielded, yielded and still. Come on, if you really want him to have his way, sing it to him. Have thine own way, Lord. 
have thine own way thou art the potter i am the clay i am the clay somebody say mold me mold me and make me after thine will after thine while i'm waiting while i am waiting oh yielded and still you are alpha and omega we worship you we worship you Al you are you are worthy to be praised you are alpha you are alpha and omega and omega we worship you we worship you Our, you are you are worthy to be great come on we give you all the glory lift your voice we give you Come on, you do it for yourself. You are worthy. Come on, lift your hearts. Come on, lift your hearts. Come on, we give you all. We give you all. We worship you, yeah. Come on, you are. Come on, one more time, we give you all, we give you all, all we worship you, we worship you, you are, you are, you are worthy to be great. Come on, if you know he's worthy, come on, give him a worthy praise. Come on, give him a worthy praise. Come on, give him a worthy praise. Hallelujah. 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 We give him all the glory. For he is worthy to be praised. Would you pass it down your road? Say, he's worthy, y'all. He's worthy, 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 worthy. He's worthy to be praised. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually what be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Scripture says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endure to all generations. We have been called to worship. Come on, put those hands together for God in this place as we begin to take our seats. Amen, amen. We're looking, amen. We do have a brief, brief moment, amen, to give our guests an opportunity, amen. I didn't get the list yet, amen. So you know what that means, right? You know when I don't get the list, you know what happens, right? When I don't get the list, I get to come into the audience and pick one person, amen. Who get to sing a good old song in the house of the Lord. Amen. And matter of fact, she know I'm looking at her because she done put her head down already, already, already. She put her head down already. Amen. But it's good. I'm a pastor and she loved me. So I'm all right. I'm all right. So I'm coming down so Sister Butler can lift up a hymn. Somebody give us some encouragement. I said give her some encouragement. I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every hour, I 
निधि Let's give Sister Butler a hand, amen, for lifting that, blessing him tonight. To God be the glory for the great things that he has done. Thank you, daughter, for letting go and letting God be glorified. As we prepare tonight for our time of giving, listen, we have, you guys have already known that revival has been on fire in this house amen these past few nights you agree anybody agree that it's been it's been the, wait a minute do you agree amen amen okay all right revival has been life-changing life transformative and it has been an amazing time together and i want to thank you for your faithful giving for your faithful attendance I mean, every night our deacons have been uh, standing, every night our ushers have been in place, every night our trustee ministry has been in place, every night our audiovisual and music ministry has been in place. And I just want to say thank you, thank you. Would you help me celebrate all these wonderful serving ministries? Amen. Amen. They make sure the air is on. Amen. The carpet is clean. The lights are bright. Amen. And they've been doing the Lord's work. So I want us to take a few seconds. Let's prepare our gift. Amen. For tonight, uh, the preacher is already in the house and he's ready. Amen. You guys already know Regina Renee Skeeters is in the house all the way from Conway. Amen. Conway, South Carolina. Amen. Amen. She is here. Amen. Serving in Columbia, but we're going to get out the way. We want to lift our offering. You guys have been so amazing in your giving uh, this week, even online. People from far away have just been amazing in their giving. And I want to say thank you for that. We do not take it for granted. You guys know that ministry does take money and you have been blessing God's house. And we're just praying that God multiply back that unto you, not 100 fold, not 500 fold, but we praying for God to send a thousand fold blessing. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, catch it real quick. Catch that real quick. Reach, reach up there. Come on, catch that real quick. The thousand fold blessing. Amen. Of what you've been giving out this week. Amen. And if you haven't had a chance to give, tonight is your night. Look at your neighbor and say, tonight is your night. Amen. Tonight is your night. Amen. Whenever we come before the king, we always come before the king with a gift. Amen with a gift in our giving so i want to say thank you for that as we prepare for giving tonight if you would follow the direction of the ushers amen follow the direction of the ushers they will lead you and guide you in our offering if you're able to stand would you please stand with me as i pray over those gifts as i pray over those gifts now father you said you would give seed to the sower and bread to the eater you said in your word that we would give and it shall be given unto us good measure pressed down shaken together and running over god you said that you would bless us beyond measure literally open windows of heaven over our life pouring out so much blessing that we would not have room to receive we don't give grudgingly nor do we give out of necessity 
necessity. God, we give out of a cheerful heart. And God, one thing we declare as we give, we will never, ever be poor. And everything we give is coming back to us in Jesus' name. And it is so. And all God's children said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Please follow the direction of the ushers as our ministers of music will lead us in music. Somebody say amen for the gift and the givers. Amen. Listen, listen, we do want to make you aware as we are getting ready to transition into uh, the ministry of music moment and the preaching moment. Uh, as you guys know, we are getting amped up here at the Oak Grove Church for our Juneteenth celebration. Amen. Everybody excited about Juneteenth? Amen. Amen. We're getting ready for our Juneteenth celebration on June the 24th, 2023, right here at the Oak Grove Baptist Church. For those of you who are joining us online, as well as to those of you who are in the building, it's going to be an amazing celebration. And we invite you to please come and share with us in our heritage and celebrate and have a great time it's lots of food it's lots of fun it's a lot of family stuff a lots of fellowship you want to come and you don't want to miss that june team celebration so i want to continue to say thank you thank you thank you for that would you guys please help me celebrate one of the greatest business professors and finance this world has to offer minister walter james our lecturer for the week let's celebrate Minister James, come on, let's give him what he deserves. We appreciate you. Amen. Amen. He will, we will be better in business in the kingdom as a result of what he has taught us. We thank God for these amazing preachers. Uh, to Dr. Johnson, who's joining us online, amen. And to Pastor Charles B. Jackson Jr., amen, who came and literally uh, took the pulpit apart last night, amen. I think I need to move my little banner, amen, just in case Pastor Brown feeling like waving it, amen. Just move it out of his way and just let him do what he got to do, amen. These guys have brought forth the word of the Lord. Can we celebrate them as they join us online for what they have done? Amen. What they've done in ministry. Well, I do have some good news. As many of you know, Pastor released another book this morning at 9 o'clock a.m. Amen. Are y'all excited? Amen. 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 We were trying to wait to the end of the month. But Pastor Gamble was like, man, we got to get this book out. And so we released that book, The Great Awakening. And we do have some copies. It's not a lot, but we do have some copies here on the campus. And uh, Reverend Ben and my mom will be in the lobby to receive you. And I'm going to come out and sign every book uh, that we that you would like to get. They will be available in the lobby immediately following worship. The Great Awakening is here. So I'm grateful to God for yet another opportunity to produce a work for for the sake of his kingdom. We are thankful that black men are still writing books. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, say you didn't hear that. I said, we are thankful that black men are still writing books. 
Amen. Amen. And remember now, they said we was no good. We couldn't do nothing. They told us that we would never amount to anything. They said our skin was too dark and we couldn't be intellectually able to do anything. They said we would never be able to study. We would never be able to talk. We would never be able to articulate. But guess what? You standing among people who hold the highest degrees in the land. You stand among some of the most creative people business owners millionaires are on your road y'all not talking back you're talking back look they said we couldn't do none of that but look at you with your chocolate light skin self doing all that god has y'all not talking back like i'm talking about you you made it through a full-time job you in your right mind you had to work for them but yet you still made it you survived and some of you have been blessed enough to retire from come on now look how good you have it and they said you'll never amount to anything they said you'll never amount to anything you ought to just look at the devil and say you lie i'm still here i made it and i'm better now than i've ever been before and just because you didn't know i could do it don't mean that god didn't have it on the end y'all not talking back like talking to you just because you didn't know i could do it didn't mean that god couldn't pull it up out of me all right all right amen just wanted to share with you that we did it pass it down your road say we did it say and we doing it and we doing it and we doing it and we doing it i know it ain't grammatically correct and dr brown will fix it when he began to teach but guess what we did it and we're doing it y'all good looking chocolate people make me want to run and shout just because you look as good as you do you and after all the hell that you've been through and you still sitting up in here in your right mind and they said you will never make it what the enemy meant for evil god has taken it and torn that burn your and if i was a woman preacher i would be running up and down any church i could find when they say they gonna lock you out because you a woman and god anointed you regardless of your gender you ought to open your mouth and give god some glory because he has no respect of persons if he can anoint a man he can anoint a woman y'all ain't acting like i'm talking about y'all God ain't got no respect to persons. Anybody who put their hand in God's hands, y'all not talking to your neighbor like you like him. Anybody who put their hands in God's hands, he'll use you for his glory. It don't matter what gender you are. If you belong to him, he'll use you for his glory. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just, I just get tired of people looking at us like we can't make it. They looking at us like we ain't got good sense. We know how to act and we can walk with the best of them because God created us fearfully and wonderfully in his image. Would you celebrate God for creating you? That's all I'm asking for making you. Oh, I said for making you, not for me, for making you your good looking self your smart self your strong self your perseverance your faithful self you're going through self look at you you don't even look like what you've been through and you still got a little bit of joy in your life to tell him thank you look at yourself god is doing a great work in you Tell your neighbor, say, in me, in me, in me. He's a good God. And I just want to say thank him. We have some of God's greatest among us. Oak Grove, we have to be honest. The fire and the oil and the wind of God has been sitting on this church every time they mounted the platform the wind of god came through these preachers and came through these singers tonight is no different he's up in here to do what he gotta do and you're gonna leave here with a miracle i'm telling you you're gonna leave here with a miracle i said a mi y'all gonna go with me i said a miracle i said a mi you gonna leave here with a you 
Lord, I sweat. You're going to leave here with a miracle. Tell your name, say, you're going to leave here with a miracle. I don't know what it is, and I ain't got to know it. Ain't none of my business. But I came to tell you that God has got you on his mind, and this is the last night of revival. And when I was in the world, it was might as well night. So tonight is might as well night. Go ahead and get everything that God got for you. Look at your neighbor say, might as well, might as well. Say, might as well, might as well. Ain't nobody in here but us. So get all that God has for you. Listen, Lady Regina is going to come from the Bible Way Church of Atlas Road and lead us in worship as we open our hearts and minds. And Deacon Butler prophe prophesied to us and say, let it go. Just come on. Unbuckle your seatbelts. And then after Lady Regina comes, listen, Pastor Johnny Brown from Gastonia, North Carolina, and the Genesis Churches. Y'all, come. listen, listen, I'm telling you, the roof is coming off this house tonight. Pastor Johnny Brown, great brother, great friend, humble man of God, literally preaching, coming out the womb. I think his mother threw him a towel and a Bible as soon as he came out the womb. And he's been preaching ever since. Strong man of God, anointed man of God, and we shall receive him tonight in the name of Jesus. Stretch both your hands this way. Say, Lord, anoint Regina. Lord, anoint Regina. And say, Lord, speak through Pastor Brown. Speak through Pastor. Somebody say in Jesus' name. Amen. want to honor Pastor Johnny Brown and also Lady Rachel Brown. It's going to be an amazing night. Um, can we just say something awesome in Jesus right here? The name of the song is entitled, You Are My Strength. Can we just begin to open up our mouths all over the atmosphere, all over the church? Come on, we open up our mouths. That's right. If God is your strength, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Come on, just a few more seconds. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. If you're able to inhale and exhale without the assistance of the machine, and that's enough to give God praise right there. Come on, can we open up our mouths just for a, a few seconds? Come on, no pumping and no priming, but you know how, God, how good God has been to you. You know the ways that he's made. You know the doors that he's opened. Come on, can we open up our mouths just for a few seconds? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Come on, that's right. Don't stop. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, just a few more seconds right here. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for being our strength. God, we thank you for being our buckler. God, we thank you for being our shield. God, we thank you for being a provider. God, we thank you for being a lifter, the lifter of our heads. God, we thank you for being a heavy load sharer. God, we thank you. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Glory. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. We say thank you. And everything we shall give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How good has he been? You are my strength, yeah, strength like no other, strength like no other, and it reaches to me. 
It rains. 
Jesus. Yeah. When nothing else could help. When nothing else could help. When nothing else would help. When nothing else would help. You know love reaches and reaches. It reaches and reaches. It reaches your healing. It reaches your love. It reaches your blood. Your blood it reaches and reaches your blood. It reaches your blood. It reaches your blood. It reaches your power. It reaches your healing. It reaches your healing. It reaches, reaches and 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 reaches me strength from day day to day to day to day from day to day from day to day your faithfulness from day to day your faithfulness from day to day consistency from day to day day to day never runs out never runs out never runs out His power reaches to the highest mountain. Come on, that's right. And it flows to the lowest, the lowest valley. Doesn't matter where you came from. Doesn't matter what you've been going through. The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. The blood, 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 the the blood, 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 the Come on, let's thank God for the blood right here. Come on, just a few more seconds. I think that death passed over because of the blood. I think that I'm alive because of the blood. When I could have been snuffed out a long time ago, it was the blood. It was the blood. Give her the blood. Thank you, God. Thank you. The blood. Gives me strength from day, day to day to day. It will never, it will never lose, it will never lose it. Yes, yes, oh yeah. Yes, 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 Lord, yes, yes, oh, yes, 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 Lord, yes. Yes in your will, yes in your way, yes, 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 yes in your will, Lord, yes in your way, Lord, yes every day, yes. Yeah. 
is your turn. Come on, hallelujah, before the man of God gets up. Come on, let's continue to saturate the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There is a sweet anointing in this sanctuary. There is a stillness in the atmosphere. So just come lay down every burden you have carried for in the sanctuary God is here there is a sweet anointing in this sanctuary there is a stillness in the atmosphere. So just come lay down. Just come lay down. Lay it down, lay it down, lay it down. Lay it down, lay it down, lay it down, lay it down. All your fears, lay it down, lay it down, lay it down. So For in the sanctuary, so come lay down, just come lay down, receive the peace, receive the peace, receive the so come lay it down, lay it down, lay it down, lay it down. Wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Lay it down, lay it down, lay it down. Lay it down. So. Every burden you you have been carrying, just come on, lay down, let go of the weight, let go of the weight. He's the lifter of your head. Come lay down, let healing take place in your body even now. Healing taking 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 place in your body even now. Healing, 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 healing. Restoration, restoration, revival, revival, revival. So come lay down, give you peace. Every burden you have carried for in the sanctuary. It's a safe place. For in the sanctuary. For in the sanctuary. 
God is He. While the anointing of God is moving and is obvious in this room, may we have about 20 of you that don't mind standing and extending your hands toward the heavens. And uh, for the next 30 seconds, let this atmosphere hear your voice. Come on, let this atmosphere hear your voice. Come on, hallelujah. Come on, you don't have to be on key. It doesn't have to be melodious. Let this atmosphere hear your voice. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on, give him glory, 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 glory. Come on, give him glory. Give him praise, give him praise, give him praise, give him praise. Tell somebody near you, he's already fought the battle for you. Come on, look at somebody and tell them those words. Tell him he's already fought the battle for you. Find one more neighbor. Tell your neighbor, he's already fought the battle for you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh Lord, now wave your hands and say, I always win. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can we do that just one last time? Find somebody and tell him he's already fought the battle for you. Now wave your hands and say, I always win. Come on, one last time. Look at somebody. Tell them he's already fought the battle for you. And now wave your hands and say, I always win. Oh, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we've come at this hour to tell you thank you. Lord God, we thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love and your kindness. Thank you that you have been faithful. And for that we are grateful. And we thank you that your faithfulness leads us into fruitfulness. And so Father we thank you that we are in the season of more than enough. We are in the season of overflow. And we thank you tonight for blessing us individually. But Father we thank you also for blessing us collectively have your way in this place bless move heal deliver set free thank you that this atmosphere is right and ready to receive a blessing from you now in the name of jesus we come against every hindrance we bind everything that's unlike you but we thank you that everything is subject to the word of god to the blood of the lamb and to the name of jesus christ thank you that we will leave better than we've come as always i yield my members to you and i surrender my will as always my will i give to you i will do what you say do please use me lord to show someone the way and enable me to say that my storage is emptied and i am available unto you in the matchless mighty marvelous and majestic name of jesus the christ of nazareth if you believe the lord and you agree with that prayer clap your hands and shout hallelujah thank god well brothers and sisters right before you're seated can you celebrate the angel of this house let's thank the lord for dr willie thompson come on everybody oh we can do better than that that's my friend and brother let's thank the lord for the man of god thank god amen you may be seated in jesus name
Pastor Thompson is not only my uh, brother in the faith, but he's also my brother in fraternity. And so we are grateful for his invitation and what the Lord is doing in the Oak Grove Church. We honor the Lord for all of your officers and your members and your staff and your deacons and everybody in the house of God. You know, everybody is somebody in the Father's house. Amen. Praise God. I honor the Lord for my wife in her absence. Can we praise the Lord for Lady Rachel Brown? Praise God. Uh, I see a few uh, uh, honorable mentions that are gentlemen of the cloth. <laughs> and uh, as I look at the lineup, I told Pastor, I said, oh, so you're trying to have a Kappa convocation, I see. Okay. <laughs> of South Carolina. That's what you're trying to do. Amen. We honor the Lord for uh, Professor James, who's been doing a phenomenal job in facilitation. Uh, um, he's a noob as well. Amen. Thank God for Pastor Fred D. Falston that's in here from Life, Destiny in Columbia. He's a noob as well. He's, he's my son, as a matter of fact. And it's good to see Dr. Moses in the room. Amen. And he's a noob as well. <laughs> Amen. And so we're just grateful for all the ministry gifts that's here. Certainly to those that came along with us from uh, Gastonia. Thank the Lord. It's good to see uh, Minister Hartage. Amen. Thank God for her. She's Thank God for Brother Richard being with us. And thank God for Elder Brown who's serving as our armor bearer. And, uh, and um, he's a sigma. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. My dear sister, my dear sister, who has ministered so wonderfully tonight, uh, Sister Regina Skeeters. Oh, my God. Amen. And uh, her mother is here. Amen. Amen. Mother Jane is here tonight. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And so we are blessed to have, I've known them almost as long as I've known myself. Amen. And so we've known them for years upon years. And the pastor had it right. She's from Conway and I am from Georgetown. So uh, we appreciate God for all that he's doing in the midst of his people. Pastor, your mother is here, right? Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Let's thank God for pastor's mother. Amen. <laughs> Right. To the musicians and everybody, we greet you, sound technicians, we honor you tonight. Let's go into the word of God. I know that um, good preaching has already been done. And so I just want to add a comma and a conjunction to what God, I believe, has been saying as we're strengthening our hands to do the business of the kingdom. Yeah. Let's go to the book of Genesis. Chapter number 26. Genesis 26. I'm going to do a little bit of reading. Um, albeit it will be expeditious and these verses are not very long seeing that they're in the Old Testament, they're still not that long. So I want to begin reading with verse 12 and conclude with verse 22. Genesis 26, verses 12 through 22. Praise God's name. Then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold. And on top of that, the Lord blessed him. Oh, you thought his harvest was his blessing. No, no, no. Verse 13 says, and the man waxed great. The land was in a famine, but the man waxed great. And went forward, and then the next level is he grew and became very great. Look at somebody and tell them God's taking you from great 
to very great. Mm -hmm. My God. Verse 14. For he had possession of flocks and possession of herds and great store of servants. And the Philistines envied him. For all the wells which his father's servants had digged in the days of Abraham, the Philistines of Abraham, his father, the Philistines had stopped them up and filled them with earth or put dirt in them. And Abimelech, who is the king, said unto Isaac, go from us. You got to get out of here. Have you committed any crimes? No. Have you done something wrong? No. You got to go because you are mightier than we. And Isaac departed thence and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerar. And he dwelt there. Thank you, Lord. And Isaac digged again. Good God Almighty. Somebody shout dig again. Oh, you can do a little better than that. Say, dig again. Thank God. And Isaac digged again the wells of water which they had uh, digged again the wells of water which they had uh, digged in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham. And he called their names after the names by which his father had called them. And Isaac's servants digged in the valley, digged in the valley, digged in the valley, and found there a well of springing water. <laughs> and verse 20 says, And the herdmen of Gerard did strive with Isaac's herdmen, saying, The water is ours. But you didn't do no work. But the water is ours. And he called the name of the well Esek because they strove with him. Yeah, yeah. Verse 21, and they digged another well. <laughs> oh, bless his name. They digged another well and they strove for that also. And he called the name of that Sitna. Verse 22, the last verse. Thank you for your patience. And he removed from thence and digged another well. And for that they strove not. And he called the name of it Rehoboth. And he said, for now the Lord hath made room for us. And we shall be fruitful in the land. God bless you. May be seated tonight. The word of the Lord is already blessed. I want to tag this text for a preaching premise in the form of a question. Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Can you ask your neighbor that if you don't mind? Say neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. Can you dig it? Can you dig it? I want to begin an introduction by dealing with the biblical concept of the blessing. The biblical concept of the blessing. We'll go throughout the text and we'll lift up a few points. The first being God's prevention the second being God's promise. The third being the problem. And the final one being the prophetic arrival. God's prevention. God's promise. The problem. And the prophetic arrival. Ask somebody else, can you dig it? Thank God. Clap your hands like you believe God's going to speak to you. The, 
the biblical concept of the blessing, if we're going to talk about that, we'll have to look uh, at several places, but I think one of the steeples or staples would be Proverbs chapter number 10. Proverbs 10 and uh, 22 says something that is extremely powerful concerning biblical blessing and how we should view it. He says, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and addeth no sorrow with it. You know, Proverbs is a book that is David and uh, some chapters of David and Bathsheba writing to their son Solomon. Yeah. And uh, I know most of the gentlemen in here will be familiar with chapter 3 of Proverbs, my son. Forget not my laws. So, so this is not Solomon talking necessarily. This is David talking to his son. David who is a king talking to his son who is getting ready to be king. And says, now I've made a great many mistakes. But I don't want you to make the same mistakes that I've made because I want you to go further, have more, and do better than me. It speaks of a transgenerational transparency that uh, sometimes instead of us being judgmental and being mean and negative to the next generation, I think that it's important that we become transparent with the next generation to let them know that the reason why I don't want you to do certain things is because I've done it and it didn't turn out too well for me. <laughs> Ain't the Lord all right. And so I want to prevent you from going down the same road. So let me be transparent with you, opposed to being judgmental. Don't just tell me what not to do. Tell me why I shouldn't do it. And I promise you it will have a greater effect on me, opposed to you just giving me direction without any type of relationship. Because I often say that rebuke without relationship will always lead to rebellion. So if you don't speak to me, then don't tell me my skirt is too short. <laughs> if you don't smile at my child, don't tell me my baby is too bad. Because we have to develop relationship before we can do any type of direction, rebuke, correction, and any of that stuff. So David says, I want to be transparent with you, Solomon, so that you don't make the same mistakes that I make. And so in chapter 10, David is telling Solomon, don't be confused with riches and blessing. You're walking into an inheritance whereby which you are getting ready to walk into a lot of riches. You won't have to work for anything. You won't have to struggle for anything. But I don't want you to think that just because you're rich, you're blessed. Because there is a dichotomy between being blessed and rich. Because if you inconstricably tie riches with the blessing, then the drug dealer must be blessed. And we know he's not. 
the pimp you may not have pimps in Elgin but we have pimps in Charlotte and pimps in Gastonia then the pimp must be blessed and we know he's not the swindler that uh, steals people's money must be blessed and we know he's not if you only view the blessing of the Lord through the lens of financial riches and prosperity brothers and sisters he said no 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 he says Solomon I want you to know that the blessing of the Lord the first thing is God takes ownership of blessing he says the blessing of the Lord prepositional phrase of the Lord he says that the only way you can be blessed is if you go through God oh bless his name any other way hallelujah that you get riches any other way that you get money is not blessing it could be a harvest it could be a payoff on your on your hard work but if you want to receive the blessing you've got to understand that the blessing can only come from god oh that's good news for somebody in here tonight to understand that as long as you stay connected to God you are blessed you may not have a lot of money but you are blessed you may not have a lot of riches in your bank account but you are blessed you may not have the biggest house or drive the best car but you are blessed because he said the blessing has to come from the Lord the blessing of the Lord the make Maketh rich. You are not blessed because you're rich, but you're rich because you're blessed. Oh God, I praise you tonight. Huh? Look at somebody. Well, matter of fact, you need to tell your neighbor this. You need to make a prophetic declaration and decree in this atmosphere by waving your hands and say, I am blessed. Uh, now tell your neighbor this now the money is getting ready to catch up with me uh, but tell them I'm blessed uh, I've got health and strength I'm in my right mind uh, I haven't gone cuckoo for cocoa puffs uh, I've gone through things that I should have had a nervous breakdown over but the Lord kept me in my right mind I am blessed uh, hallelujah because I know where my blessing comes from I'm connected to the source uh, and as long as I stay connected to the source uh, the resource uh, will follow the blessing of the Lord maketh rich uh, or you may be seated but somebody wave your hands and say my money is on the way uh, well yes it is yes it is yes it is uh, but you better hold on to your blessing until your money comes uh, you better praise him for being blessed uh, before your money comes I want to tell you that a blessing is better than money come down church I said when you're blessed you don't even need money right now when you're blessed you'll walk in a restaurant and a stranger will pay for your tab when you're blessed when you're blessed you'll live in a house that you really don't even qualify for when you're blessed when you're blessed brothers and sisters you'll get a position on your job that you don't even have the, the resume for because you're blessed tell your neighbor in this season I'm learning to, to save my money but use my blessing tell somebody spend your uh, favor spend your blessing but save your money you may be seated you may be seated blessing of the Lord is not to be confused with things it's not to be confused with money and riches there is a dichotomy whenever God blesses it is an indication that he can trust you to do more work you're not blessed so that you can be lazy you're not blessed so that you can be paralyzed with your praise. But he's blessed you so that you can do more work for him. The harvest is plenteous. Matthew 9, 37 says, the harvest is plenteous or the blessing is great, but the workers or the laborers are few. 
So, brothers and sisters, we see in this particular text a man that is blessed. Thank you, Jesus. A man that is blessed. And uh, uh, how does he get it? How, what, what happens? What, what is the thing that becomes the catalyst for this man's blessing? Isaac, the Bible said, is in a famine. That's not what your Bible says in 26 of Genesis. A famine was in the land. The text opens up with giving us a backdrop, Moses, before the blessing. The backdrop before the blessing. The backdrop before the blessing. The story that's behind the glory. It begins to open up with telling us that uh, what you see, calling it Rehoboth, and what you see, seeing his harvest and his blessing, does not come easy. There was a backdrop before the blessing. And I want to preach to some blessed people in here and ask you to be honest tonight and admit that although you are blessed and you claim your blessing, that you've gone through some things to be blessed like you are. And that's why I don't understand people that get uh, angry with you and get jealous of you and get upset and begin to hate on the blessing because they don't understand that there's a story behind the glory. They don't know what you had to endure and your walk of faith and what you had to sacrifice and how you had to step out on faith when everybody thought you were crazy they thought you had lost your mind but you took a step of faith and now you're blessed and now they're gonna get jealous of you not knowing the backdrop there's a story behind this what's the story folks then what's the story i'm glad you asked the story is again that they are in a famine a famine a famine not just any kind of famine but the bible said that there was a famine in the land and uh besides the famine that was in the days of abraham all right is not not what your bible says this is the famine in the land besides the famine that was in the days of abraham now in order for us to appreciate this brothers and sisters we have to see the instructions of God God said now Isaac there's a famine in the land but whatever you do you need to stay in this place and do not go to Egypt that's what the uh, instruction was God says I'm preventing you to leave Lord there's a famine Lord I need to go I need to go to Egypt because it is at Egypt where there is the Nile River that shapes the entire civilization you do understand that civilization is said to have begun at the fertile crescent or what is considered to be Mesopotamia which is centered around the Nile River on the continent of Africa uh, isn't that right historically uh, and so he said let me go to there because it's uh, prosperous there it's fruitful it's water there there's a life there uh, it's vigor and vitality there uh, but God said no uh, you can't leave where you are uh, you've got to stay here uh, because I'm getting ready to show you something Oh, brothers and sisters, scoot up and talk to me for a little while because, brothers and sisters, how frustrating it is when God makes you stay in a place that is a famine there. Uh, how frustrating is it when you want to move and you want to go somewhere else uh, that seems more popular and seems uh, more fruitful and seems more vibrant uh, but God said no you gotta stay in the place that's causing you frustration uh, uh, what do 
do you do when God causes you to stay in a place where it's uncomfortable uh, keeps you at a place where he know folk don't like you keep you at a place where he know they can't stand you keep you at a place where things are not going the way you want them to go he says I'm making you stay here because I'm getting ready to fulfill a prophetic promise and I don't need you to mess up by going somewhere out of my will and abort what I'm trying to do even in a dry place I need you to tell somebody God is able to bless you in a dry place oh man well praise his name you, you may be seated I'm getting a little happy too early but on your way down to your seat shut it down your road like his juicy gossip and say God can do it in a desert place you don't have to go to Atlanta, New York, California, Florida, New Jersey. You don't got to go nowhere else. God said, I'll bless you so good right where you are that people will be coming to find you instead of you running to find them. Uh, wave your hands and say, I am blessed. All right, you may be seated, brothers and sisters. My timer gives me about 18 more minutes, and I am going to, to give you up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, I praise you right now. Come on, somebody make the devil real mad right now and shout, I am blessed. My children are blessed. Come on. My grandchildren are blessed. My household is blessed. My family and my business and my house. Blessed, blessed, blessed. And whom the Lord blessed, the devil cannot curse. Stand still, Isaac. You may be seated if you will brothers and sisters because this is a familiar famine this is a familiar famine this is a famine of your father he says this is a famine in the land besides the famine that was in the days of Abraham you see brothers and sisters according to Genesis chapter 12 and verse 10 the Bible says that there was a famine in the land and Abram went down into Egypt to sojourn there for the famine was grievous in the land so wait a minute now in Genesis 12 Isaac or rather Abram is in Gerar the same place that Isaac is in and the same scenario happens but it's a different situation Richard same scenario but it's a different situation mm -hmm. the famine hit his father in Genesis 12 and his father goes down to Egypt to find rescue, respite, and to find substance. But now in chapter 26, a famine hits the same place. And Isaac is there, but this time God says to Isaac, just like your daddy has experienced a famine, you will experience a famine. However, your daddy could go to Egypt, but I'm making you stay here. It's a familiar famine, but I'm getting ready to do something different that's going to cause an end to the generational pass down of famine. You've got to confront some things so that it does not pass down to your generation. Your daddy ran from it, hence you had to deal with what your daddy ran from. But if you can confront it, you'll be able to to conquer it oh come down church you've got to deal with some stuff to let the devil know no 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 devil I'm not gonna let this continue in my bloodline 
come down church it stops with me the book stops here and I'm going to apply the blood on it my daddy was an alcoholic my granddaddy was an alcoholic my uncles were alcoholic my brothers are alcoholics but it's going to stop with me it's not going to pass down to my next generation because I'm going to confront it so I can conquer it a familiar family you may be seated brothers and sisters but also Moses the reason why he could not go to Egypt is because if he went to Egypt he would have gone to Egypt and gone there prematurely and aborted the prophetic plan of redemption oh come now church all right scoot up here just a little closer because brothers and sisters what you've got to understand is that had Isaac gone in to Egypt about a hundred and fifty years later he would have a grandson or oh, tell somebody near you Isaac could not go to Egypt uh -huh, it would have messed up a prophet a hundred and fifty years later Isaac would have a grandson named Joseph and that Joseph would be thrown in a pit and sold he would end up in Egypt becoming the second in command to Pharaoh he would die and there would rise a Pharaoh who didn't know Joseph and that Pharaoh would enslave the Hebrews in Egypt but God would raise up Moses and God would would send plagues and the final plague would require them to slay a lamb and put the blood on the door and the death would pass over them fast forward 2,000 years during the same holiday called Passover during that feast the Lamb of God who was slain before the foundation of the world would be able to shed his blood that we might be saved from death hell and sin so no Isaac you can't go to Egypt now because God has a plan for later and I want to tell you something right now brothers and sisters that whenever God closes the door you shouldn't get mad at him you shouldn't question it you should thank him for the closed doors because it's setting you up for something greater later you can't go to Egypt because you're getting ready to mess up a plan of redemption so stay here in Gerard good God Almighty stay in Gerard because I'm getting ready to bless you <laughs> in a famine the Bible said that the man sold in a famine Thompson and God didn't take 10 years 5 years nor 3 years the Bible said in the same year he reaped a hundredfold I want you to prophetically decree it and declare it down your road tell your neighbor before this year is out oh come on I see before this year is out we're going to reap a hundredfold tell somebody you got six more months to plan for what you're going to do with your harvest to plan for what you're going to do with your blessing I'll let you know when to come in I'll let you know I'm coming I'm coming Ooh, Corey. Regina here's the part that makes me shout and I don't mean I don't I'm not trying to just build on emotions that's not what I'm trying to do but here's the part that makes me shout that the etymology of the word Gerar or the name Gerar means the place of the turn so the reason why God said I want you to stay there is because even though it's uncomfortable it's still able to turn around for you 
I need 20 people to do me one favor and turn right where you are and say it's turning around for me. I don't have to run. I'm just waiting on the turn. I don't have to leave. I'm just waiting on the turn. I don't have to pack up. I don't have to go to a new place. I'm waiting on the turn where I am right now. It's turning. 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 All right, please be seated, brothers and sisters. I'm coming. I'm coming in. Give God a chance to turn it. All right, all right, all right, all right. You may be seated. Let me bring this on in. God said, stay in in the land that has a famine because famine may be in the land but favor is on the man <laughs> hallelujah the text says and I quote Faustin the man waxed great isn't that what it says, Mr. Arthur? The man wax great. The man. Lord, have mercy. God tells Isaac, if you stay, I will be with you. He said, I'll bless you and your seed. I will give you all these countries. They will be multiplied as the stars because your father kept my commandments. Isaac says, all right, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to stay. He obeys, but after his obedience and his harvest, the Bible said he reaped a hundredfold and the Lord blessed him. Remember in introduction, we drew that dichotomy between stuff and blessing. He says he reaped a hundredfold and the Lord blessed him. His harvest wasn't his blessing. His harvest was just a, a product of the seed he sowed. Some of you all don't necessarily need a blessing to get a new car. You just need to fix your credit score. No, no, that ain't no. Stop swiping your credit card for every sale that comes online. Stay off of QVC. Lord have mercy. Don't, don't, don't fall into the, the flesh with Amazon Prime. You, know, you, you, don't, you don't necessarily need a blessing. All you need is a good credit score. But brothers and sisters, because you will deserve that particular harvest. But what you need a blessing for is the stuff that you cannot purchase with money. Like your grandchild being saved. Like God healing you from cancer. Woo, glory to God. Come on church. What you need the blessing for is things that money cannot buy you. For you to walk into a banker's office and they look at you and say it's something about you and here's how you know you got the blessing on you it's a, a, a one line here it is friend one line i normally don't do this but <laughs> look at somebody if you don't mind tell them get ready for that get ready for that tell them i normally don't do this but <laughs> He reaps the harvest and the Lord blesses him. Your children will be blessed. Your seed will be multiplied like the star. And the Lord blesses him. And after God gives him a harvest and gives him the blessing, then he runs into problems. First problem is the perception of the people. 
You may be seated, brothers and sisters. I'm coming. I'm, my argument is going to be through in seven minutes. The perception of the people. He lied about his wife because she was beautiful. That speaks volumes in and of itself. That she was bad. At this juncture, she was well into her 60s. But still bad. Oh, come on here, somebody. I just... Oh, 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 come now, church. Well, well into her 60s. And the man still got to lie to keep men from hollering at her. Retired and bad. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Joined Social Security and still bad. The king saw Abimelech sees Isaac and Rebekah. The, the, the King James terminology is sporting. Saw Isaac sporting with Rebekah. The king said, what's this you've done? What if one of the men would have laid with your wife? We would have brought damnation on it. So he now makes... A declaration. Nobody touch her. Nobody touch her. So he's dealing with the perception of the people and the area that he was in that these people are so aggressive that they left her alone as long as they thought she was his sister. But if they thought that she was his uh, uh, wife they would have done something to kill him that's the area that he's in and God said you still got to stay there malicious people people that would just try to take stuff God said stay there right then he has to deal, so the perception of the people, but then he has to deal with the jealousy of the people. They're in a famine, but Isaac was blessed, and they envied him greatly. They're in a famine, everybody, everybody in famine, but Isaac in his house is blessed. He's the only one eating, y'all ain't helping me preach. He's the only one going through, because he says I worked a principle that's above your agricultural principle. Everybody was sowing a seed. But the famine was on the land, but the favor was on the man. Everybody had seed in the ground, but only Isaac reaped the harvest. Because he had the favor on him. Oh, brothers and sisters, let me move. And so because of this, the king, the leader says, you know how these people are. They are getting ready to kill you, not because you've done something to them. They're going to kill you because you're blessed. Oh, may, may I just take 30 seconds, just 30 seconds, just 30 seconds, that there's some people that don't like you and you ain't done nothing to them. Some people can't stand you and you've never even crossed words with them. As a matter of fact, you try to be extra nice to them because you know they don't like you. So you try to run them down, go out of your way to speak to them, try to smile every time you see them. But let me free you up tonight, boo-boo. That's some people aren't going to like you not because they, you've done anything to them but they can't stand you because they're intimidated of you and it's only because you are blessed and tell somebody it's all right now i got the revelation i'm not running behind nobody i'm not trying to get nobody to like me i'm not trying to like and love your facebook posts so you think there ain't no problem i know you roll your eyes at me every time you see me coming you suck your teeth every time i wave my hands and go to shouting when your friend got the mic you up clapping but when i get the mic you sitting down looking mean that's all right 
tonight I understand now that it's because the favor of God is on my life that's it he said you got to go they're going to kill you get out of here you making us look bad he said you the king said you got to go because you are mightier than us that's it you got to go you into your presence is intimidating us you being blessed and your success is robbing me of all my excuses so you got to go that's why some people don't like you because your success is robbing them of excuses oh I didn't have a daddy neither did I oh I didn't come from a rich family neither did I I you know I had people trying to come against me they tried to but so did I but if I made it you can too your success is making them feel comfortable because it's eliminating excuse I'm a woman well so am I you know I'm a black man so am I so the next problem then is the rejection of the king the king puts him out but Isaac now the scripture says is persistent and brothers and sisters in the last four minutes he's persistent the text says that he pitched a tent in the valley. I'm going to go. I'm not fighting to stay in a place. I'm not fighting to stay in a place where God has obviously released me from. God told me to stay in Gerar and I'm going to stay in Gerar. But I don't have to stay in your city. So I'm going to leave the city. But I'm going to go to the valley. But I got to stay in Gerard now. Because I've been bound by this word. But I'm going to go in the valley where nobody want to go. I'm going to pitch a tent in the valley. <laughs> oh brothers and sisters. He pitches a tent first. Because that represents stability. He's got to lay a foundation. He's got to do the groundwork. And then after that, he starts to dig the wells of his father that had been stopped up. That's a message in and of itself. Happy Father's Day coming up Sunday. But it's a message in and of itself. Digging up the old wells. The wells are already there, Thompson. And I'm learning in our generation that we're trying to create wells, but all God wants us to do is just dig up the old well and just get the dirt out of it. That's all we got to do in this generation. I'm going to use the framework. I'm going to use what's already there. But Moses, I got, listen, the problem in this generation is, Regina, we have people that's bashing the father's wells and they're trying to destroy the father's wells. And they're trying to get rid of the father's wells. And they're trying to ignore the father's wells. But uh, Isaac said, no, the well is there. All I got to do is just get the dirt out of it. I got to clean it up, make it look a little better. It still works. Tell somebody, the well still works. And you know the story, brothers and sisters. He's in a valley, digs the well, and he finds water. He digs, Esek is the place of oppression. It's the place of argument, and it means oppression. Digs another well, Sitna, which means strife, where we get the word Satan. And then finally, he digs a well called Rehoboth. Is not that what Jesus did uh, over 2,000 years ago? The first well was the well that was oppression. They oppressed him by putting a cross on him and thorns on his head and nails in his hands and nails in his feet. Calvary was Isaac. 
And uh, that happened on a Friday. But then uh, on Saturday, he dug a well in Sitna. Mm -hmm. uh, remember, Sitna is where we get the word Satan. And uh, the Bible says that uh, he goes down to hell. I don't know about you, but Satan is in hell. He goes down in hell and he digs another well in Sidna. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, that was on about Saturday. But uh, thank God for the third well, mm -hmm, uh, which is called Rehoboth, which means uh, the wide place. Because uh, early Sunday morning, uh, he got up uh, with all power in his hand. And uh, Rehoboth is resurrection. Well, uh, the Bible says that uh, after uh, he had gone and dug those wells and uh, the people begin to fight him for those wells. Yes, Isaac says, um, uh, I'm not going to fight you for my well because uh, as long as I have a shovel, I can uh, dig again. Give me 30 more seconds. Uh, ain't the Lord all right? Uh, tell your neighbor. Uh, tell your neighbor. Uh, say neighbor. Uh, tell them I will not fight you uh, over a well. Uh, tell them uh, as long as I have a shovel, uh, I can uh, dig again. Uh, ain't the Lord all right? Uh, because uh, the favor uh, is on the man. Uh, and the church says, yeah, uh, Bible says uh, that he digs, uh, he digs another well. Uh, oh, Lord, uh, tell your neighbor uh, for the last time. Uh, say, neighbor, 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 neighbor. Tell them I got a word for you. Uh, tell them I know you've been going through a hard place but tell him here's a word dig again ain't the Lord all right hey, dig again I know it's been rough but dig again I know you had to cry but dig again I know your feelings got hurt but dig again he says, I got another dig in me. Oh, yeah. He hits a place uh, called Rehoboth. Uh, and Rehoboth means uh, the Lord uh, had made room for me. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, oh, I want you to know uh, it won't all be like this God will perfect that which concerns him sooner than later it's gonna turn in your favor it's turning right now can I get 20 more people to turn where you are and say I feel the turn I feel the turn I feel the turn. I feel the turn. I feel the turn. I feel the turn. Hold up your shovel. Hold up your shovel. And let the devil know I'm still going to dig. I'm still going to dig. Hold up your shovel. Hold it in the air. Let the devil know I'm still going to dig. It's not over. It's not over. It's not over. It's not over. Tell one more neighbor. One more neighbor. Say it's not over. I got 
got another day in me. It's not over. I got another day in me. It's not over. It's not over. It's not over. It's going to be all right. Take three steps and say, I'm coming out of it. I'm on my way out. I'm on my way out. Is there anybody here? Anybody in here that can tell somebody? I'm on my way out. I'm on my way out. I'm on my way. I'm on my way out of it. I'm on my way out of it. Keep digging. Keep on digging. Keep on digging. Keep on digging. Everyone standing, I want to pray for you. Touch somebody on the shoulder and tell them I made it to Mount Rehoboth. Tell somebody you made it to your Rehoboth. You can go on to sleep tonight. You can go on to sleep tonight. You made it to your Rehoboth. It's already all right. Already all right. Already. Already all right. Let it go. It hey, 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 hey. Come on, I feel the Holy Ghost in this room. Reminding somebody, keep on digging, keep on digging. I want to pray for you. want you to be encouraged that your struggle is over you have made it to your Rehoboth it's a prophetic arrival you made it to your Rehoboth That struggle is over for you, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Lift those hands, lift those hands, lift those hands. Lift those hands. Oh, yeah. Come on, oh, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Whatever your worship is right now, put it on your lips. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 
Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, put your children on your mind. Put your grandchildren on your mind. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you, Jesus, for my rehoboth. I don't have to pack up and move to Egypt. You can do it for me even in the valley. Even in the valley. Even in the valley, the valley, the valley, the valley, the valley. I've been in the valley, but God told me to tell you that even in the valley, you can dig again. Even in the valley, you can find a well of springing water. Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for this place in which we stand. Thank you for it being our Rehoboth. Thank you, Father, that yokes are being destroyed and burdens are being removed. That you're reviving somebody's heart that was getting ready to give up. But thank you for reminding us we can dig again. We can dig again. We can dig again. We can dig again. Oh, we can dig again. We can dig again. Oh, dig again, dig again, dig again, dig again because there is a well of water come on come on there is a well of water there is a well of water 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 yeah there is a well there is a well of water There is a well of water. Tell your neighbor, there is a well of water. There's a well, there's a well, there's a well, there's a well. There is, there is a well of water. Oh, thank you, Jesus. There is a well of water. God's calling you to tap into the well tonight. I said, God's calling you to tap into the well tonight. How do you tap into it? He's calling you back to prayer. He missed hearing you in the morning, early in the morning when you used to rise up early. He's calling you back to prayer and consecration, laying on the altar. You cried out to him when you needed him to help you. Now that he's helped you, you don't talk to him anymore, but he's calling you back to the well. There, there is a well of water. Thank you, Jesus. There's a well of water. There's a well of water. Come on, come on back to the well. Hey, shot. If you come back to the well, He'll save your son if you come back to the well. He'll deliver your daughter if you come back to the well. He'll deliver your husband. Somebody's been going through marital problems. But the Lord told me to tell you your answer is at the well. Your answer is at the well. Come on back to the well. Come on back to the well. Come on back to the well. And, uh, Father, and we thank you for the Messiah. Thank you for the manifestation of your word. Thank you for signs and wonders. Thank you for miracles. Thank you for demonstration. Thank you for deliverance. 
breakthroughs. Thank you because it's all at the well. And we give you glory, Lord. We give you honor. And we give you praise. Thank you, Father, that we are not only recipients of a harvest, but we're also blessed. No matter where we go, we give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Clap your hands and let's seal it with a praise. Come on. Thank God, let's seal it with a praise. I said, let's seal it with a praise, everybody. Thank God. Hallelujah. Thank God. We're getting ready to go. And I'm going to give it to, to your pastor. But you know I'm a country boy, Regina. And you know it very well. I'm a country boy. And I want y'all just to help me with this. It's a country song we used to sing in the country of Georgetown. What am I in B-flat? B-flat. All right. I figured as much. All right. Can you feel God moving? Can you feel God moving? Oh yes, I can. Can you feel God moving? Yeah, you know that I, I feel Him moving in my soul. Come on, clap your hands. Can you feel God moving? Yeah. Can you feel God moving? Oh yeah, I can. Can you feel God moving? Yeah. You know that I feel it moving in my soul. Come on. Come on. One more time. Oh, can you feel God moving? So can you feel it, the holy power? Oh yes, I can. Can you feel God moving? Yeah. You know that I feel it. Come on, in my soul. Hey, hey. You might as well enjoy the Lord. Oh, can you feel God moving? Yeah. Good God Almighty, can you feel His holy power? Oh, yes, I can. Can you feel God moving? Yeah. You know that I feel it. Oh, in my soul.
Can you feel God moving? Can you feel God moving? Can you feel God moving? Oh, I feel. Oh, I feel. Oh, I feel. I feel it moving. Oh, I feel it moving. I feel it moving. You ought to clap your hands. I feel it moving. I feel it moving. I feel it moving. Get on in my hands. I feel it moving. I feel it moving. I feel it moving. I feel it moving. Get on in my hands. Say, dig again, dig again, dig again. You ought to throw your head back and say, I can dig it, I can dig it. I say, I can dig it, I can dig it. Would you help me celebrate the preaching and teaching ministry of Pastor Johnny Brown? Come on, hallelujah! What a word! 
I can dig again. As we stand to leave this place, but never from his presence, church, I feel revived. I feel revived. Not only do I know I've been revived, Sue, but I feel revived. And I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for being open and being able and being ready for God to do only what God can do. And that is revive us again. Come on, let's give God a hand of praise for reviving us. I say, I feel like going back to work now. Come on, say, I feel like going back. Keep on keeping on doing what God has called you to do. As we lift our hands to be dismissed from this place, we don't want to stop anybody from giving their life to Christ. It's not a form of fashion. It's a confession of the soul a confession of the mouth and a believing of the heart that God has raised Jesus Christ from the dead and with that belief knowing that you shall be saved for with your mouth confession is made unto salvation somebody say amen, amen. and with the heart man believes if you're in this room he said he that cometh to God must believe that he is and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him if you're in this place and you need to make Jesus Christ your heart and your home. I know, I know it's a, I know it's a little late. Not really, because when we was in the world, we was just getting started. Amen. Anybody can agree. Yeah. That's why you left the world. You somebody, that's why I left the world, Pastor, so I can go to bed early. Amen. But what I've learned, Sister Stripling, is that sometimes it's not people in the room that need the invitation. Sometimes it's somebody that's watching in a foreign country. And they just need somebody to offer them Jesus Christ. And they're surfing the way up looking, looking for, looking for somebody to say that Jesus is the answer. And that Jesus is the way. And I'm so grateful that we have the patience, Sheila, we have the passion, we have the compassion to take a moment and offer Christ to somebody. It doesn't matter where you are, it doesn't matter what you're going through. If you put your hand in God's hands, you'll never be the same again. It doesn't matter what your past is, for all of us have a past. Come on, somebody say all of us all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of god but does anybody know that when we confess those sins he is faithful he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness somebody has been upset with their well but tonight pastor brown has reminded us to dig again all you got to do is get the dirt out somebody say get the dirt out get the dirt out get the dirt out the Bible says when they dug the well and came upon a spring, Jackie, they said it came upon a spring of living water, fresh water for the refreshing of their souls. We just want to pause to give somebody a chance to come to Christ. If you're in this room and you know it's you, I invite you to come. Maybe you've been baptized. Maybe you did a whole lot of things for religious purposes, but now you want to do it for God's purposes. You want to be about the business of the kingdom. That's the whole reason why we come to not just be revived, but to open the door for somebody else to be restored to their rightful relationship with God. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's lift our hearts and lift our hands as we leave this place. We're never from his presence. In Jesus' name, as we lift his hand. Come on, let's do it together. I love, I love you, Jesus. Come on, let's do it together. I worship and adore. Yeah. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love. Come on, you got it. You got it going home. More than anything. Come on, last time. Sing it. Say, oh. Come on, we going home.
just want to tell you, just want to tell you, God, that I love you more. Come on. I feel your strength coming. I feel your strength coming more, more. Come on, last time for the Holy Ghost. Make your confession. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Come on, you sing it from your heart. I worship and adore you, yeah. Woo! I feel you, God. Just want to tell you, God, yeah. those hands now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his glory with exceeding joy to him who has favored you in the midst of the famine to him who has given us the tools so that we can dig again God we thank you so much for what you have done these past three nights keep this glory on this house and in our homes god keep this fire and flavor and flair on us as we continue to do the works that you have called us to do and we'll be careful to give you glory honor and praise and it is so in the name of the lord jesus we pray and somebody shout amen 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 Tell somebody, say, dig again, let's dig again, let's dig again, let's dig again, let's dig again. 